everyone, this is Denise Soden with In Liquid Color. I'm setting up a new palette today and I thought I'd do a quick video on um, my first palette that I had and what I'm doing to change the second one. Um, so when you're first setting up a palette, you're going to find as many different recommendations as there are artists for what colors to start with. Um, you can buy pre-fabricated palettes that have just a certain set amount of colors, um, but those colors are the ones that you're stuck with, or you can buy tubes or individual pans of paint and begin setting up your own palette. Um, so when I started, I started off with the typical um, two shades of each primary, one leaning towards the warm side and one leaning towards the cool side. Um, so I've got both a warm and a cool yellow, a warm and a cool red, and a warm and a cool blue. Um, and warm and cool means which side they lean towards on the color spectrum. So um, the warm colors tend to be colors like reds, yellows, and oranges. We think about the sun, anything fiery like that. Those are the warm colors. And then the cool colors tend to lean more towards blue, greens, and violets, um, kind of like the ocean or the sky. So those are, um, you know, kind of the foundation of where my palette started. I also started with three earth colors in yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Um, those colors are, have done me well for the last year. I'm a wildlife and animal painter, so I have different needs than, say, a floral watercolorist or a landscape artist even. Um, so I use these a lot when I'm mixing different colors to get the ranges that I need. I also started with a sap green a phthalo green blue shade, and a convenience purple. This is a Windsor purple or dioxane purple. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, a violet. Um, so when I was all said and done, I had set up my palette. And now it currently looks something like this. I have my earth colors that I talked about, my yellows, the reds, the blues, sap green, the purple still here, but I did take out the phthalo green. I know it's recommended to a lot of artists to start with that color, but I ended up never using it. I do, however, use a phthalo turquoise that I'm absolutely in love with, and it uh, mixes really well with warms to make these beautiful, vibrant dark greens. So that's what I switched that one out for. I've also um, added a couple other colors over the year. Um, I have a quinacridone burnt orange, uh, a perylene green, it's very dark, beautiful green, a green gold, a dark blue, um, and a neutral tint here. So this is what I had come up with, but I still am not 100% happy given my subjects that I do. I'm still gonna keep this palette. I really like working off of it. But for painting animals and wildlife, I really wanted a wider range of the earth colors. So I bought a new palette. After days of research, I ended up going with the same type of palette that I already currently have. It's from Mission Gold. You can buy it from any of the uh, vendors online like Amazon or Jerry's Art of Rama or Dick Blick um, and it's only like $15 and that ended up being the the point for me that I had to go with. I researched getting half pans, the little half pans of paint that you can switch out, um, which would make having to do a whole new palette like this unnecessary, which would be great, but the cheapest I could get a 24 color palette for was about $70 and that just wasn't in my budget right now. So I did go ahead and go with the same palette I already have. There's a couple things I really like about it. It is sealed airtight, so when you travel, you can just pick it up and go with it. It won't leak anywhere, even if the paints inside are wet. And I also really like the wells in this palette are at a sloped angle. So when you're using your brush, unlike with a pan where you'd have to kind of wiggle down into it, and maybe when it gets lower down, you'd have to scrape into the corners with your brush, which can ruin the tip. This one you can pull from the side, which I really, really enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my new colors, uh, bring them over to the front of the screen, and I'll share with you my thought process with them.
here's my palette all set up. Um, I only filled them about halfway full this time. You can see the last palette that I had, I filled the whole compartments and it actually makes it harder to get the lighter washes out when you don't want to use the pigment at full strength. So I'm going to try this out with the half filled pans and, and see how that works. I think it'll be a lot better and I'll just have to refill them more often, but that's okay. Um, so my palette is mostly the same on the cool side as it was before. The blues, greens are all the same, although I did switch out my neutral tint for the indigo. My warm side of the palette is the one that changed quite a bit. So I added several more earth colors and a lot of them are convenience colors. So ones that I won't have to mix as often or will be easier to mix. Browns can be really um, tough if you're in a hurry, if you're painting outside and want a specific color. Um, sometimes it can take a really long time to mix that perfect brown that you want. So I did want some more variety there. Um, and I ended up using a lot of the Mission Gold paints. This is a newer company um, that is out of Asia. I'll put description in the link. Um, I'm not sure what country they're from, but the it's a newer company. They're not as well known, but they do have vibrant, gorgeous, vivid colors, um, and the paints stay really moist even after they have dried in the pans. They're really easy to re-wet, so um, I really like them. I'm going to try this out and see how it goes. I did keep my Daniel Smith uh, Burnt Sienna, and I also kept the Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which I absolutely love. I have a Holbein um, quinacridone gold that I got as a sample um, so I thought I would try that out as well um, I haven't used it in any paintings yet and it is a little on the yellower side I've noticed that it's also made from two different pigments rather than a single pigment like most um, quinacridone golds are made from so I might change that out later with a different brand after I've used up my sample tube um, I also have my Windsor Newton Windsor Red um, it's also called Pyro Red and that one is the most opaque of the colors that I have. I don't know if I'm going to keep it after my little 5 milliliter tube runs out. They were out of Daniel Smith the day that I went to the art store and needed that color. Um, but for right now, it's a safe staple. So I'm going to go ahead and end out this video by swatching out the colors for you to see. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.